In this video, we're going to talk about Bragg's equation, how we could derive it, and how we can use it to solve some problems. Bragg's equation helps you to calculate the interspace and distance between layers of atoms. It uses X-ray diffraction to calculate the distance. So we're going to pass the first X-ray on this atom, and then it's going to bounce off at the same angle. And then we're going to have another X-ray coming at the same angle, striking the atom below it. So we're going to call this angle theta, which is going to be the same as that one. And let's turn this into a right triangle. So the hypotenuse of this right triangle is D, the interspace and distance between the layers of atoms. Now let's call this position Y, position Z, and position X. And this is going to be the wave of the X-ray. And we're going to say these two waves are in phase. Now the wave on the bottom we need to realize it travels a greater distance than the wave on top. The extra distance that it travels is equal to this portion of the right triangle plus this portion. So this portion on the left, that's xy. And then this second portion here, that's yz. So that's the extra distance that the wave on the bottom travels compared to the wave on the top. Now that extra distance is equal to the wavelength of the wave. It can also equal to a multiple of the wavelength. So it's going to be n times lambda, where lambda is the wavelength of the x-ray. Now it could be 2 times lambda. Uh, 3 times lambda, 4 times it, it can vary. But if you're dealing with a problem that says first order diffraction, n is 1. For second order diffraction, n is 2, and so forth. Now I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to rewrite this equation shortly. Because there's something else I need to show you. Now this angle that we have here is the same as this angle because these two lines, they're parallel, or at least they should be parallel. My drawing is not perfect. And then this angle is the same. Now what we need to realize is that this angle theta is the same as this angle here. And for those of you who are not sure, let's say if we have a horizontal line, which represents this line, and then we have a line perpendicular to it, which is this line here. And then we're going to draw a ray, which represents this line. And then we're going to turn this into a right triangle. So let's say if this is 30 degrees, and this side is perpendicular to this side, that means this has to be 60, which means this has to be 30. So therefore, these two angles are congruent. They equal each other. So therefore, this is theta, and that is theta as well. Now I'm going to draw just this triangle for now. So the hypotenuse of that triangle is D, as you can see here. And this side is x, y. That is the distance between position x and position y. And then we have the angle theta. Now using Sokotoa trig, we know that sine theta is equal to the side opposite to it, which is x, y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is across the 90 degree angle and that's D. So if you cross multiply, you'll see that xy is equal to D sine theta. Now if we focus on this triangle, okay that was a messed up drawing, let's do that again. Here we have the angle theta, this is D, 
and then this side is yz. So sine theta is equal to the opposite side, which is yz, divided by the hypotenuse, which is d. So cross multiplying, we can see that d sine theta is equal to yz. Now let's go back to the other equation that we had before, where we said that xy plus yz is equal to n times the wavelength. So the extra distance that the second wave travels is xy plus yz. And that extra distance has to equal the wavelength or multiple of the wavelength, which is n times lambda. Now let's replace xy with d sine theta. And let's replace yz with d sine theta. So 1 d sine theta plus 1 d sine theta is 2 d sine theta. So now we have Bragg's equation, which is 2 d sine theta is equal to n times the wavelength. So this is the equation that we're going to use to solve problems associated with Bragg's equation. Let's start with this problem. X-rays with wavelengths of 125 picometers was used to study a crystal which produced a reflection at an angle of 17.4 degrees. Assuming first order diffraction, what is the distance between planes of atoms? So let's draw a picture. So this is the distance that we're looking for. And here we have an x-ray that strikes an atom and then it bounces off. And it does the same thing to uh, this atom as well. Now the angle at which it strikes the atom relative to the x-axis, that's 17.4 degrees, which means this angle is the same. So that's theta. And we have the wavelength. It's 125 picometers. And assuming first order diffraction, so n is 1, we need to calculate d. So therefore, we could use this equation. 2d sine theta is equal to n times lambda. So solving for d, we need to divide both sides by 2 sine theta. So n lambda divided by 2 sine theta is equal to the distance between the planes of atoms. So in this example, n is 1, lambda is 125 picometers, divided by 2 times sine of 17.4 degrees. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So you should get 209 picometers. So that is the distance between the planes of atoms. Now let's move on to the next problem. Number two, the second order diffraction for a certain crystal was 18.4 degrees using x-rays with a wavelength of 1.42 angstroms. What is the interplanar spacing of atoms in this crystal? So let's make a list of what we know. We're dealing with second order diffraction. So n is equal to 2. Now the angle is 18.4 degrees. So that's theta. And we're dealing with a wavelength of 1.42 angstrom. Now what is an angstrom? One angstrom is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, which works out to be 100 picometers. So now our goal is to calculate the interplanar spacing of the atoms in this crystal. So we're looking for d. So we can therefore use the same equation where d is n multiplied by lambda, which is the wavelength, divided by 2 sine theta. So n in this example is 2. Lambda is 1.42 angstrom. 
and let's divide that by 2 sine of 18.4 degrees. So we could cancel 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now, if lambda is in angstroms, d is going to have the same unit. So if we take 1.42 and divide it by sine 18.4, This is going to be 4.50 angstroms. So that's the distance between planes of atoms in this crystal. Now let's convert that to picometers. One angstrom is 100 picometers, so 4.5 angstroms is going to be 4.5 times 100, which is 450 picometers. So that's the interplanar spacing of atoms in that unit. Number three. Crystal XYZ has an interplanar spacing of 94.3 picometers. Using first order diffraction, what is the X-ray wavelength that should be used to produce a reflection with an angle of 19.5 degrees? So in this example, we have the distance between the planes of atoms, so that's D, and that's 94.3 picometers. Now we're dealing with first order diffraction, so N is 1 and the angle is 19.5 degrees. What is the x-ray wavelength? So we're looking for lambda in this problem. You can pause the video if you want to try it. So let's start with this form of the equation. 2d sine theta is equal to n times lambda. So if we divide both sides by n, the wavelength is 2d sine theta over n. So that's going to be 2 times 94.3 picometers multiplied by sine of 19.5 divided by 1, which when you divide something by 1, it's not going to change. So the answer that you should get is 62.96 picometers. So make sure that these two share the same unit. And that's it for this problem. The space in between planes of atoms in crystal ABC was found to be 1.28 angstroms using an x-ray wavelength of 122 picometers. Assuming second order diffraction, what should be the angle at which the x-rays will be reflected across the surface of the crystal. So the space in between planes of atoms is D. That's 1.28 angstroms. And the wavelength is 122 picometers. So we need to make sure that these units match in order for this equation to work. Now we're dealing with second order diffraction, so N is 2, and our goal is to calculate the angle. Now we know that one angstrom is 100 picometers, so 1.28 angstroms must be 128 picometers. So now we could use the equation 2d sine theta is equal to n times lambda. So let's divide both sides by 2d. So sine theta is n lambda over 2d. So that's going to be sine theta is equal to n, which is 2, lambda is 122 picometers, and d is 128. So 2 over 2 is 1, so sine theta is going to be 122 divided by 128. And so that's going to be 0 0.9531. So to find the angle theta, it's going to be the arc sine of 0.9531. So the angle is 72.38 degrees. And that's the answer to this problem.